Welcome back everyone. Um, I wasn't actually going to film this part uh, to continue on with our um, domed lid video, but I, I decided since I'm here, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to throw a knob um, that I'm then going to attach later, like after it's had a little bit of time to set up. Uh, we do have a video about throwing off the hump where I've shown how to make a knob before. If you're making a lot of knobs at once, that's probably how you're going to want to do that. But since this is just for a demo, I'm just going to make one or maybe two. I just thought I'd show that really quick. So I've got a real small amount of clay here, maybe like a quarter of a pound, maybe even a little less. I didn't weigh it, honestly. <laughs> But enough to make at least one knob. I'm just centering that like normal. Kind of having to use my fingertips a little more than my hands because it's so small to kind of get that last little bit of finesse to get it centered. And that'll look like that. So I don't need this much clay to throw a knob, but if my piece of clay were much smaller, it would be really hard to. Um, you know, have any control over it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm kind of going to do like a miniature version of throwing off the hump. I'm gonna isolate how much I think I'm gonna need. And what I'm doing is I'm sort of pushing down and towards center. So it's bringing out that piece that I wanna use, that I wanna work with. And then I'm just gonna let this bottom part kind of be like a support. So I'm gonna start bringing that up. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, this is not ideal because it can trap air in there, but that's just the way it's working out right now. So that's okay. We'll just move some clay in there, fill that in, and not worry too much about it. I'm not going to make a hollow knob because this knob is not going to be very large, obviously. Um, if you've seen that technique or you're aware of it, um, what I would say about that is a hollow knob is something that, I'm sorry you guys, I'm speaking so slowly today. I'm not feeling all that well and I'm a bit out of breath. Um, anyway, a hollow knob is what you would use if you're needing to make a really large knob because if it's big, you don't want it to be solid because then it'll be bulky. But if you're just making a knob um, that's kind of little for a smaller form, a small jar, a small teapot, whatever it may be, you don't need to make it hollow because first of all, when it's so small, it's going to drive you nuts to try and make that hollow, and it's also just not necessary because the size of it is not going to add so much bulk that um, it weighs the piece down. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of starting to make a rudimentary knob type shape by sort of squeezing with these two fingers and kind of keeping my hands together to stay steady and keep it on center, and I'm sort of making like the waist. And I'm just moving gently, gently, kind of up and down. Oh, I got a little dry there. Your fingers definitely need to slide for this part, you guys. And so I'm starting to see a shape that I like, but I think I want to bring it in even a little more. So this would just be kind of a finesse step. It's up to you. It all depends on the shape of knob that you like. You might like something lower and wider. Um, that's something you just have to play around with. And then I kind of like... On a domed lid, I kind of also like to have a slightly domed knob because it just kind of makes it like coherent or cohesive. Is that word they were constantly using in college? Cohesive. Everything has to be cohesive. <laughs> and it's true, you guys. It's not a bad concept to apply, but uh, it becomes comically, that word becomes comically used when you're in art school, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So just kind of a gentle dome shape there. Um, like we talked about last time, my tripod and my light and stuff is in my way, so I can't completely lean as much as I want to to see this from the side, but hopefully this gives you enough of, I, of an idea um, if you're just beginning to throw knobs, um, how you can kind of do that separately from the piece and then attach it later. This is how you just throw a knob, just, just the knob on its own. The other technique I'm going to show you is how you can add a bit of clay to the top of the knob, um, or sorry, to the top of the lid and then shape it actually on top of the lid. 
And I think it's more difficult and sometimes not really necessary. So this is a technique where the attachment part is going to be much easier because the knob is already thrown. So let me get this off of here. Just going to take my needle tool gently across and grab. And then I'm going to set that to the side and let it set up for a bit. And then I'll show you how to attach it. Okay, welcome back. Um, here we are. I'm going to show you how to attach the knob that I just threw onto the domed lid that I made in the last video. So um, again, to me, this is a relatively easy attachment process. Uh, it doesn't involve much water being added to this piece or um, like the next process that I'm going to show you, you actually throw the knob on top of this and this can get pretty wet and, and kind of weak. So I personally like the process of just throwing the knob separately and then attaching it. So let me show you how to do that. Um, there is going to be a little bit of working in of this seam right here. So it'll require a little bit of water, but just not too much. Not so much that it's going to saturate the piece and um, limit what you can do because of that saturation and that weakening of the clay. Okay, so like always, we're going to start by centering I am using my foam bat for this because um, I don't need to put a lot of sideways pressure on the piece during this process and it's just a nice, you know, soft surface to work on so that's kind of nice. So using my needle tool, I'm going to just start by placing the knob onto that area where I've left it a little bit higher and kind of flat. And I'm just going to kind of like gently press down and wiggle so that the bottom of the knob starts to get formed to the top of the dome. And then I'm just going to trace around that. I'm not going to even use um, the wheel movement. I'm not going to move the wheel uh, around to trace that because I really want to get it traced like exactly. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because the bottom of my knob attachment is not perfectly round. So if I just kind of let my tool drag and had the wheel move, it wouldn't be um, quite as snug of a fit. And then you guys, I always like to make a mark and a mark. So like a mark on the knob and a mark on the lid. Not so dramatic that you can't get it out later. I don't know if you guys can see that actually. It might be too small, but basically I just put a little notch on the side of the knob and the top of the lid so I know how to match it back up. That's something I've always found really helpful is um, not to have to uh, try to fit it back like a puzzle piece, but you already have that information like right there for you. So you might notice my tracing that I did, like it looks a little off center from this point, but I'm gonna let that be okay for now because I am gonna kind of turn this and be able to even that out after I just get like a rough attachment on, okay? So I'm going to score very thoroughly here all inside of that area that I traced. And it's really important to be patient here. If you're impatient about scoring, I do understand. But um, if I can do that with my left so you can see it better. But you might want to get one of those tools that has like multiple prongs on it so you can get through this a little faster. You can even use like a little plastic fork, maybe just to make more marks, but just make sure that your score marks are deep enough to where they're making like some little crumbs around it. If you're just barely scratching the surface, it's not going to give you as much of a hold. Okay. And then it's going to be the same thing here. I'm just going to score that all over that bottom area really well. Um, I'm actually not going to be using slip today. Uh, technically that word slip would be when we have a little clay mixed with water to like standard would be kind of like a yogurt consistency to use as like a glue. This clay does pretty well as long as it's um, still got a little moisture in it. I found the clay that I'm working with attaches pretty well just with a little water. I'm just going to pat a little water into that surface and also into the surface of the um, lid that I scored. 
find my little markings. Okay, this one's right here, and this one's here, so I'm gonna match that up. And I'm just gonna press and wiggle, press and wiggle. I'm not, I'm not pressing hard though, you guys, and I'm also kind of like, mm, how do I put that into words? Like I'm constantly moving the pressure around. I'm not ever just going like straight down on it. I'm kind of like rolling the pressure around and just press it. I'm so sorry I'm sniffling so much, folks. Please forgive. I hope that's not grossing anybody out. Um, but yeah, you're just going to press and wiggle until you feel like it's got a secure uh, stick, secure attachment. <laughs> and then, you guys, the nice thing about the foam is once you get it centered, it'll kind of make a mark, like a temporary mark there for you. So it's kind of nice with some of these foam bats because you can set it right back down where you had it and not uh, worry about it getting off center. It, it's not cent beyond center isn't going to matter too, too much though, you guys, for the rest of this process, because I'm not going to be turning the wheel too much. But all I really need to do from here is I just need to kind of clean up this attachment and I am going to ever so slightly hold it at the top and I'm not going to even add any water because what's coming out from like sort of squeezing out like glue from out from under the attachment is going to give me enough should I mean I can always add a little if I need to but that should give me like enough moisture to kind of finish this off smooth it out and get that attachment really well attached and you can see there is a little bit of off-centeredness with that attachment but when this is still friends it's it's a pretty good the attachment is fine in my opinion, it could be a little more delicate. I mean, this isn't like exactly how I would maybe have made this, but for a demo, I mean, I hope it gives you enough of an idea of how you can kind of do this. And you know, if you sometimes like, sometimes I like to do more of like an exposed seam where two things are meeting up. So if you just even wanted to press the knob down and, le and leave it at that because you liked that little bit of separation, that would be okay too. You don't even have to necessarily do this part you could just do a standard attachment however like fits the style of your work so there's kind of the first easy version next let me grab a little bit of a different setup here so this time we're not going to be able to, to work on foam because we're going to actually throw this little piece into a knob on top of this lid so this lid is going to need to be centered and lugged down. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to center it up best I can. Remember, <laughs> sometimes you can never, oh, my bat's not, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, friends. I was wondering why that just was not wanting to cooperate. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay. Now that might make our lives a little easier. So I'm just kind of really gently, because this is a very light kind of delicate piece. So I just really gently push that as close to center as I could get. I'm going to wet down around it on the bat. I'm not wetting the piece though. I'm just wetting the bat so that my lugs have a little something to stick to. I've got a piece of scrap here. Um, these lugs do not need to be big at all because I'm working with a really small, like I said, small kind of delicate piece. I'm going to sort of roll these into like sort of a gentle worm shape and holding my piece on center, I'm going to really gently press those down. Um, and you guys, the clay that I'm using for my lugs today is very, very soft. And that's really what you want in a scenario like this, where the piece is thin, it's kind of delicate. Um, and if you have hard clay and hard lugs and you push those hard lugs up against it, this is going to start to warp. So we want soft clay, thin lugs, and just gentle, gentle fingers. Okay. I'm, so I'm not, I'm not really like jamming the clay like this way. I'm kind of more pushing it down and letting it go around that lid. And it's not even, I mean, honestly, you guys, it's not getting like a very, very intense stick to the bat. 
but I just need something there to hold it in place a little bit so that I can focus here. I'm just gonna make one more little one. This is like way more precious than you normally need to be with lugs, you guys, but again with lids, you're working such a small, delicate little item. Kind of have to treat it that way all the way through to start to finish. Okay. I might go around and just give them one more little press down. I'm really pressing, again, I'm kind of pressing it more towards the bat than towards the piece and just the clay will kind of form around it and hopefully hold it. Hopefully. <laughs> I've definitely done this before where it didn't, um, but that's okay. Mistakes help us learn. All right, so I'm gonna start again, this is gonna look familiar, by scoring that top attachment that I've made, top attachment surface. Really, oh, sorry, really um, thoroughly. really, really thoroughly. And then I have this little piece here. Uh, I did wedge this, <laughs> which was kind of comical, but um, yeah, I just felt like <clears throat> to give myself the best chance of success, I wanted to wedge it. And I just sort of formed it into a very, very primitive knob shape. Didn't try to do too much with like the forming part of it, because I knew that that would need to happen more on the wheel. But I'm just going to scratch that I'm sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't say scratch, you guys, the technical term is to score, but I do pottery with little kids quite often, and so we say scratch and attach sometimes. Okay, so there are my two surfaces that are going to join, and then I'm going to actually throw this, kind of like pull it up and form it on the wheel. This is actually the way that I was first introduced to making knobs. And um, I don't do this anymore, you guys. It's To me, this is kind of one of those traditional techniques where it's like, it's just the way that it was done for a long time. But now that, I don't know. I don't, don't know how to put this into words. It's like now that there are so many of us potters and so many different minds in, like involved in these techniques and things and, and everyone trying things in different ways, it's just like, why? Why did we start off like this by making this so hard? Um, because see what I'm going to be doing now? I'm going to be I'm trying to, first of all, center this on top of uh, my lid that I made. And you can only get it so centered because you can only put so much pressure, you know, uh, before you start to have major problems. So, I, you guys, I don't mean to be going into this technique griping about it. I mean, I guess that is what I'm doing, but I don't mean to gripe. I just, it's one of those those techniques where you learn it and then, you know, you're like, okay, that's the way it's done. That's That's how we do that. And then you try something else and it's like, oh, but there could be any number of ways to do this. And I only need to do this difficult technique if it's like really necessary for the piece for some reason. And at the beginning part of this video, I was kind of teasing about the word cohesive. And if I remember right, it's been years, but that was like the justification as I was learning for this technique it was like, well, when you throw it on the piece, it makes it look more cohesive. But um, you guys, in my opinion, what makes a piece or a collection of pieces cohesive is that you've been thoughtful about making it cohesive. The techniques can play a role in that, but um, I'm just, a, I've become a big proponent of uh, it being okay to do things in an easier, to use easier techniques, okay? So, sorry to like be on a rant about that. So what I've been doing here is um, kind of centering and getting this into a knob shape at the same time. Now, what 
what you're gonna be tempted to do if you try this technique is you're gonna wanna like center it down like you do a normal piece of clay. But I have found that the longer there's water standing on top of this um, lid, and the longer I'm putting pressure on it, like the longer this takes, the more kind of mistakes or, you know, chance of the lid getting ruined can happen. And so I kind of combine those two steps together because I want to get it done quickly. And I'm just kind of pushing this down now. Again, it's a domed shaped lid, so I kind of want a domed shaped knob. So I want to sort of roll that down, having a high point here. But again, you know, you could do whatever style of knob you want with a domed lid. Um, that's definitely open to interpretation. So this part is not really part of the technique. It's just part of my, my personal preference. Um, that the roundness of the knob kind of match with the roundness of the lid. And then I'm just going to take my finger, put a little pressure down there to make sure that where it's attached, it's, it's pretty centered. It's not real wonky. And then I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that good. Um, I will do a little bit of cleanup. Actually look to the side. Yeah, that looks okay. So just using a rib, whatever. Again, this is just a preference thing. I like to kind of smooth the top out. Round off the sides a little bit, compress a little bit maybe. Just sort of clean it up. Maybe lift it just a little more. So I'm just angling my finger like underneath. Right there, there. Okay. I think I'm gonna call that. So that's the um, technique of throwing it, throwing the knob on top of the lid. If you like to do it this way, more power to you. We all have to do it the way that is best for us. But again, this one just presents a little bit more challenge to me. Um, I just have more nerves doing this technique because I know it can collapse if I'm not careful. Let me take this off and show it to you. Now those lugs might want to kind of stick because they have had water dripping down into them. So if you find that your lugs are sticking, just leave them for a bit. Maybe even like put a fan on. Sometimes that can help, but be patient if the lugs are being sticky because you and you can see how they kind of formed to the side of the lid pretty nicely. That's kind of what you want. Um, but anyway, if they're sticking, just be patient. Try to maybe get a little air on them. And um, yeah, just let it set for a minute. That's not going to ever really hurt anything. Okay, so while it's still in place, I'm going to clean up a little bit from those lugs. Smooth the top out a little bit. And I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to do it for this project. I wish I had a little pot to put these lids on to show you guys, but this wasn't included in this part. Or this. Yeah. Wasn't included in this series of, of little videos. So there's the lid. My hands were a bit drier, but I lift it up so you can kind of see it in profile. That's what it looks like. And I can tell that this lid is, uh, like, it's giving a lot more than my other lid was when I lifted it off. Um, so I would definitely, if you do this technique, you need to leave it alone afterwards, let it be for a bit. Because I can tell, like I said, that it's definitely a bit pliable still at this point. So I'm just going to really gently rest it there and let it set up. I hope that this video was helpful for you today, you guys. If you're working on, sorry, if you're working on lids, I would love to hear where you are in your journey. And as always, have a wonderful two weeks and we will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye Pottery Plus. Bye. Have a good day.